Hello everyone and welcome to this section. In this section, we're going to learn how to build one single neuron or a single, what we call it, perceptor model, okay? All right, uh, so let's get started. So this is a kind of an image of a single neuron, okay, within our human brain. As we mentioned earlier, in general, our human, uh, human brain works in a way that we have kind of a nucleus in here. And what we do is that we acquire different signals from, we call it, different dendrites, okay? We send all these signals into a neuron, and that neuron kind of a nucleus, and, that, and within that nucleus, some processing happens in a way. I'm gonna show you how can we model that mathematically. And then afterwards, we send the output into what we call the axon here, which is the output um, that we send to the, new, to the next neuron and so on, okay? All right. And what will happen is we have hundreds of, hundreds of billions of neurons connecting to each other, talking and communicating to each other. And that's, you know, kind of the miracle of the human, uh, of the human brain. And what when we learn, when we say that we were able to learn, that's when we actually change the strength of the connection between these neurons in a way, okay? All right, so let's model that mathematically. And once we model that mathematically, just one neuron, we can build kind of our own mini brain in a way, okay? So let's get started. So what happened is, again, as we mentioned, we have a couple of dendrites. These are kind of, you know, this inputs here. We have our nucleus, the processing happens inside, and we have our axon, that's the output, okay? So when we do that mathematically, okay, okay we'll say, assume, okay, we have all these inputs going into, which is the dendrites, we're gonna assume they're a bunch of inputs. We're gonna call them, let's say, x1, x2, x3, okay? Here, we have a neuron, I'm gonna show what we can include, you know, mathematically within that neuron. And here, the, the values, connecting, for example, the input x1 to the neuron, we're gonna assume it's kind of weights, okay? All these are simply numbers, okay? You can put here weight, for example, like zero, which means any input we're gonna be inserted here, we multiply it by zero and then send to the, nu to the, to the nucleus or the neuron. x2, we can multiply it, let's say, by weight two of one, which means we're gonna pass it on. And then you can change, for example, the values of the weight. You can increase the strength of the weight by making it, let's say, w310 which means whatever input we're gonna be sent here to x3, we actually multiply by value of 10, for example, and so on. And that's how you change the importance, for example, of, of these different inputs or of these, of these different neurons um, in, the, uh, in the previous layer, okay? That's pretty much how can we model it, again, in, in, in a very, very simple form, all right? So let's take a, a little bit of, of, uh, of, more, um, of more kind of look into, into mathematics of it, okay? So here we have, again, our neural model. Here we have what we call it the inputs, which is x1, x2, x3. And all these inputs are, we call it, independent variables, okay? The objective here of building this neuron or artificial neural network is that I have a bunch of inputs or a couple of inputs, which is x1, for example, inputs. I have y outputs, and I want this neuron or this, like, artificial neural network to learn the pattern, okay? To learn you in a supervised fashion. When you see these inputs, we're gonna generate that output, okay? And that output can actually be binary, can be, let's say, zero or one, which means, you know, you detected, for example, a pedestrian or not, okay? So if it's not a pedestrian, that means the output will gonna be zero. If there is a pedestrian, that means the output will, will be one. And that's why we call it a binary classification, okay? Or it might be categorical classification, which means, for example, in our traffic sign classification problem, we're gonna classify traffic sign to, let's say, one out of 43 traffic signs. 30 kilometers an hour, 60 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. There is yield, there is like, you know, pedestrian, there is like, you know, like no entry and so on and so forth, okay? And that's what we call category. We have different categories. And here the output, we can have various outputs where each of these signals identify a category, okay? And then the last one is what we call the continuous signal. We can actually use, for example, artificial neural network to perform regression, for example. So we can have the output not as a binary, not as a categorical, we can actually use it as, um, as a continuous signal, okay? All right. So again, that's pretty much how can, we, um, how can we model a neuron mathematically. And if you guys can see here, the weights can be used to show the strength of a particular node. So here, we, again, we can just chain the value of the weights, and that's how we indicate how the neuron, you know, preceding neuron actually has kind of, a, kind of an important, importance to it, okay? All right, so let's open that neuron and see what's inside, what's inside there, okay, mathematically, all right? Okay, so let's get started. So what we're gonna do is that we assume that this neuron, okay, which is the mathematical neuron that we kind of developed, has a kind of a summation 
okay, along with what we call it activation function, okay. Again, I, I promise you not to go in like a, in depth through a, through a lot of math because there's a lot of math involved. I'll try to make it as practical as possible, and then we're gonna learn how can we actually model that and um, and develop the, like kind of a, in Python actual code for it. Okay, but I want you guys to understand the intuition. This is very important. You can't just go and build an artificial, artificial neural network without knowing the intuition, what's happening from a very high, uh, very high conceptual level, okay? So what happened here, again, I have my inputs, I have my output Y, okay? And each of these inputs, I'm gonna multiply it by weights. So simply, I'm gonna multiply X1 by W1, and then I'm gonna multiply X2 by W2, X3 by W3, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna basically sum them up. Okay, and that's how you can see the summation here. And then I'm gonna use what we call it a bias signal, okay? Bias can mean simply be used to change the level of the function, okay? In, in like the summation in total, okay? You can set the bias to zero, for example. But in general, bias would be one of the tunable uh, parameters as well, okay? Or a number of adjustable, what we call it adjustable parameter as well, okay? And then the outcome, the output from here, we can apply a kind of an activation function to it, okay? The activation function can be lots of things. I'm gonna have an entire lecture to actually talk about different activation functions we're gonna be using in, in our network, okay? All right, so the key element or the key question here, and that's what we, part of the, um, of the questions we're gonna go through uh, during the uh, coding exercise. How many adjustable parameters do we have in one single neuron model like this? Okay, so first of all, we have, if we have three inputs, that means we have three weights, okay? And we have a bias signal too. So we have three weights plus one bias, that means we have four adjustable parameters, okay? All right, that's great. What if we have two, for example? Again, all these we're gonna show them when we, when we go through building two neuron models and multiple or multi-neuron models, okay? All right. Okay, what about the activation function? Let's take a look at a kind of a practical example, okay? That have actual real numbers along with an actual activation function. Let's assume that we have an activation function that we call it unit step. Uh, we'll call it threshold activation function. Simply put, if the if I if my input is simply uh, smaller than zero, okay. If x is smaller than zero, we're gonna set the output to zero, okay. If my input x is greater than zero, we're gonna set the output to one. All right. It's again, it's kind of a binary values. Whenever I'm below, if it's the input is negative, we're gonna set it to zero, okay. If the input is positive, we're gonna cap it to one in a very simple form, okay? All right, and that's our network. We have a bunch of inputs. We have x1, x2, x3. We have, again, our summation. We have our activation function. Let's assume that these inputs are, let's say, value of one, three, and four, okay? So let's go through what we call it forward run within the network. We have our input, and let's see what's gonna happen, you know, from a mathematical point of view until we actually go through the different layers and generate the output, okay? So our input one will be multiplied by the weight, which is 0.7, okay, that's the first step. And that's one times 0.7. And then we have input number two, which is the value, the value of the input, x2 is actually three here. Three times 0.1, which is three times 0.1, that's the second input. We have four times 0.3, that's my third, uh, my third input. And then afterwards, we're gonna apply the bias. Here I'm assuming the bias is zero, that's why I ignore the bias per se. And then afterwards, all that signal, again, I didn't apply the activation function yet. This value here is 2.2, okay? And then I'm gonna apply the activation function. So the activation function here in this case is actually the input, which is to the activation function is 2.2. That means it's more than zero. That means we're gonna set it to one. That's why the y, the output is equal to one in a very, in a very simple form. That's how we actually model one single neuron using a unit step activation function, okay? All right. So let's take a look at kind of a fun simulations that we can use, um, that we can do using what we call the playground for TensorFlow. All right, that will show you how can we build different neurons, for example, and so on. Let's get, uh, let's go there and let's get started. All right, so this is kind of, you know, like a, we call it play, playground to build, to build your own mini brain, per se. Again, there's no data, uh, or there's no like, um, uh, we're not actually like modeling anything in Python, for example, this is kind of a playground for you, okay? So here we have what we call it our own features. These are kind of the inputs that we have. In our case here, we have X1 and X2, which is just two inputs, for example. 
can actually increase it to make it, let's say, three inputs or whatever. And then here, we can actually build kind of our own neurons. So if we want to have just one neuron model, we can just build our one neuron model. And then here, we can add different hidden layers, for example, if we want to. So that's if you want to add, for example, additional neurons. If you want to add additional neurons, that, that, that's how you can build kind of your own artificial neural network, per se, okay? Here, you can change your activation functions. I, again, I haven't uh, went through the activation functions yet, but that's, again, um, the list of all activation functions. I'm going to show you what do you mean by all this. I'm going to show, we're going to show you, again, moving forward, how we do, like, regularization, per se, and how do we change the, that rate. And then how can we change the learning rate as well, okay? So let's take a look at a very quick, simple example. We're going to assume that we have all our neurons, or let's say, you know, like, we're going to remove even this. We're going to remove one hidden layer, and that's our very simple model to just have two inputs with one neuron, and that's what we call it one neuron model that we actually built already kind of a math from a mathematical perspective, okay? We can change this, for example, and make it linear, so the output's actually here through the activation function is pretty much linear, and we can use it just to classify two samples, all right? So let's get it started and let's train it. Again, this is just kind of an overview to show you how can we build, you know, kind of network quickly. And moving forward, they're going to show you how to do actual classification, how to actually perform training, and how can to, we build a multi, multi-layer uh, perceptor network. If you just click play, that's we're going to see, okay, that's how, that's how learning happens or learning occurs. And you can see that we actually built kind of that classification border or line between these two classes. That means, okay, we classified, for example, the input to whatever one of these two classes, okay? All right. What if you want to change, for example, the number of neurons? You can, you can change the number of neurons. You can click play. I'm going to show you again, because it's a very simple example, just linear classification. However, if you want to make it a little bit more complex, if you, get, again, you're going to run it, you're going to show you that we know, like, the network in this fashion can classify something like this. Because, you know, because the model is very simple. We only have five neurons. We need more hidden layers. We need, for example, more neurons and so on. Let's add, for example, one additional hidden layer. Let's you know, add, add neurons, and let's give it a shot. You will see again, we're trying to train, it's trying so hard to find that boundary between the two, okay? But again, it's pretty, pretty difficult. Okay, maybe let's change the activation function. Let's make it, for example, ReLU activation function. I'm gonna show you what they mean by uh, ReLU or rectified linear units. It's actually fascinating. So we, when you actually add the ReLU function with a couple of, with two, new, two hidden layers, each of six neurons was very easy to actually draw that boundary, okay? And that's pretty much what we're gonna show you um, throughout the entire section. How can we build our artificial neural networks? How can we change our activation functions to actually do different classification problems as you guys can see here? All right, and that's pretty much all what I have for this section. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next section.